Hey, we're back in the live stream lounge here at BevNet Live Summer 2016. I'm Ray Latif, the managing editor of BevNet, and I am joined by the one and only Bill Creelman, the founder and CEO of Spindrift. Bill, how are you? Great, thank you. How is your BevNet Live going? So far, so good. It's been a great program. Yeah, you had a fantastic presentation at our beverage school session on Monday, uh, very well received, talking about uh, the journey of the beverage entrepreneur, and you've done this, or you, now you're in the midst of doing this a second time. Yeah. Um, you know, what, what are you seeing in the face of the entrepreneurs that, you know, are, are you seeing sort of the same thing that you, <laughs> you had gone through when you I were do. Uh, I recognize, growing up? I recognize the expressions, yeah. It's, uh, it was exciting. I mean, I think, you know, the challenges remain the same as when I was uh, starting uh, our first business, which is, you know, you have an idea and you need somewhere to, to uh, you need an audience to tell that story to. And I think we, for me, that... Even as our business gets more and more mature, we still are asking ourselves that question. You know, who is most apt to listen? Who's responding? And the, ch the unique challenge now is just with the retailers evolving as quickly as they are. Um, even on a year-to-year -year basis, you have to be asking yourself, is it still the right place? Is the audience still there? Or have they moved somewhere else? And so um, it's, it's, a, it's an evolution. Yeah, and you know, Spindrift sells a uh, line of craft sodas and a line of sparkling waters. Yes. Um, two categories that are both in the carbonated section, or could be uh, could be housed or shelved in the carbonated section, but you know, not necessarily. So, how are you yeah. manning sales and distribution for two categories that aren't necessarily always going to be next to each other on the shelf? Yeah. That's, uh, how much time do we have? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, 30 seconds. <laughs> no, we got time. No, we, so <clears throat> with our, our full flavored line, the glass line, we really are continuing to, prior to prioritize food service. So while it's available um, in select retail environments, where, where we're really continuing to push and see most of our growth is in the grab and go, kind of where someone's telling a premium and interesting food service story and they need a sparkling beverage that matches that story. On the sparkling water line, we are also pursuing the grab and go sets, the premium food service, but we've also seen those sales translate into exciting retail sales as well. The primary difference, of course, is that the glass product's also refrigerated, so it's always gonna sit in the cooler where now with the, uh, the, uh, the can product, we can actually take it out into other parts of the store and experiment with off-shelf and some of the other display opportunities that for six years we've really never been able to get to. So you're starting to see the brand now activate in different places and I think that's helping us really with um, turns and awareness. Yeah, and you introduced the can package about two years ago for your sparkling yeah, water? That's right, yeah. Yeah, and it's interesting, I'm gonna put you on the spot. Sorry, Bill. Um, you know, okay. the first time I saw it, I saw it at Trader Joe's. Yeah. And, you know, not a lot of brand names get into Trader Joe's. Um, and, you know, you don't really have to get into the details of how, you know, contracts are signed and stuff like that. But, you know, how did that conversation start? It was, uh, I, I guess, maybe I'll just evolve it to sort of generally, because I think we had the same experience at Trader's and at our other retail partners, which was people were aware of the glass product. I think they'd seen the glass product in the market before. Um, and I think there was, what we discovered in time was there was a bit of an unmet demand. So if you didn't have a place to put the glass product, you were kind of out of luck. Now with the cans, um, we could reapproach a lot of the same retailers and say, hey, n now let's, let's talk again. Let's see if there's um, a better fit. I also just think sparkling water has come so far. Um, you know, I think we're still, all of us are trying to sort out what the future of spark of the sparkling category is. We now feel um, stronger than ever that bubbles are staying, bubbles are safe. It's now a question of what the expression of those bubbles are. There's the caffeinated bubbles, there's uncaffeinated. For us, where we are, I think, is really in the re refreshment bubbles, you know, the sparkling water, the seltzer, that world, where we believe there's a really bright future. Uh, I would have to agree because I've tasted your products and uh, they're <laughs> phenomenal. So thank you, Bill. You're such an important part of the beverage industry, in my opinion. And I really love talking to you and having you be here at this show as a, you know as a resource and, and just you. seeing you guys grow. So thanks so much for being with us and uh, see you soon. Yeah, enjoy the rest of the day. Thanks, you too.